He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to this Easter resurrection of our Lord Christ Jesus service. And even though the sanctuary is empty, I know I'm gathered with you in your homes this day. And I have a big smile on my face because he is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us, let us sing of that in Christ is risen today. Make our beginning this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We know the reason why our Lord walked that road of suffering it was because of our sin. So now let us join together in confession of our sin. Almighty God, 
I confess that I am a sinner in thought, word, and deed. I not only commit sin, I am a sinner in substance. Forgive me for what I have done and for what I have failed to do. Forgive me for what I am and for what I have failed to become. Forgive me for the sake of him who died and rose for me. Jesus Christ, my Lord. Jesus Christ has died your death and risen victorious over your death. With forgiveness, he gives you his resurrection. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The first lesson according to Acts, chapter 10. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling them the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the peoples and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson according to Colossians chapter 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
There's always been a close relationship between baptism and this day of this resurrection of our Lord because 2,000 years ago, he offered new life to everyone. And we receive that new life in our baptism. We live that new life in our baptismal waters each and every day. Therefore, we continue now with the baptismal renewal. In holy baptism, God removes the dark pall of sin and death and overshadows and puts on us the white garment of his perfect righteousness. I ask you anew, do you renounce the devil and all of his works and all of his ways? I do renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in God the Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Is it your earnest purpose to continue steadfast in this faith and the promise of your baptism as a member of the church to be diligent in the use of the means of grace and prayer. Yes, yes, with the help of God. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all of your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. I now invite Roxy and the children, Jordan and Gracie, and all the children at home to gather around TVs for the children's message. Well, good morning. Um, before we start, I want to um, encourage the kids at home. We're going to do a little activity. Um, with the girls up here, and I'll instruct you as we go forward, forward with it, but I just want you to kind of pay attention, and I'll give you some directions. Okay, well, happy Easter. I see you brought your Easter eggs up, and um, let's see. I forget who gets which color. Okay, Jordan. Now, when you go on an Easter egg hunt, don't open them yet. When you go on an Easter egg hunt, um, do you, do you, think that there's going to be something in the egg, or why do you just go hunting for them? You want something in there. Yeah, because it's Easter. You want something in there, right? Okay, so let's see. Which one of you was going first? What's in your egg, Gracie? <gasps> it's, it's nails. It reminds us of Good Friday when Christ was um, nailed to the cross, right? Okay, thank you. Jordan, what's in yours? <gasps> it's the burial cloth that Jesus was buried in. Um, after he was crucified and put in the tomb. And, well, I wonder what's in mine. Surprise, there's nothing in mine. Hmm, that's kind of disappointing sometimes, isn't it? But obviously, since we're talking about Easter, this is a good thing because that represents Jesus ra raising from the dead, right? Right? But on that same day, um, when we think about going on an Easter egg hunt, we'd be surprised if there wasn't an, something in the egg, right? Now, when Mary and Mary were out, um, and they headed to the tomb, and there wasn't Jesus in there, I wonder, I wonder if they were surprised. I know that they were scared. I know that they were filled with joy as well. But I wonder if they were surprised when they looked in. So what we're going to do... Now is we're gonna, I'm going to kind of summarize the gospel of Matthew as Matthew tells the story of the resurrection. Now, bear in mind, the gospels, there's different, um, as in people telling stories, which is, it's not a story per se, but as a perception, this is what Matthew perceives, and this is what he wrote. So 
in the story, when we go through, we're talking about Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, and they went to the tomb. It was the um, Sunday after Jesus was crucified. Now, going forward, when I say, now this is where the kids can help out at home, and you guys too, when you hear me say, Jesus, I want you to say, he is risen. Each time in my story, when I say Jesus, you say, he is risen. You guys got it. You are so awesome. So you at home, anytime you hear Jesus, you say he is risen. Okay, so here goes the story, and I have a picture out of the Gospel of Matthew. Mary Magdalene and Mary went to the tomb. They were going to look for Jesus. They were, and when they got there, um, there was a huge earthquake, and an angel appeared, and he rolled away that big stone. But Jesus, he is risen, it was not there. And the angel told them, don't be afraid. He actually asked them to go in and look because Jesus was not there. So the angel told them, don't be afraid. But they needed to go back to Galilee and tell the disciples that Jesus was not there and that he had rose just like he said he would so on the way back mary mary were on their way and suddenly jesus appeared and um he too told greeted them and told them not to be afraid but they should go on to galilee and that's where jesus would meet the disciples so that is a summary of the story of Matthew's account of the Easter story. And I thank you so much for your participation in this. And um, I pray that you have a very, very blessed Easter. You guys and all of those kids um, that we so look forward to joining us again when we can be here in the sanctuary. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we so thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your dear son who died on that cross and rose again for the forgiveness of all of our sins. Lord, during these times of hard times, we know we can look to you and reflect on your goodness and your love for us. We, pr we pray for all here and all out in our communities that they would have a very, very blessed Easter and continue to focus on Jesus Christ as he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
mercy and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We know from the gospel text that when these women were decided to go early to that tomb on that Sunday morning, they were apprehensive. One of their appreh- why they were apprehensive was because they didn't know who was going to roll the stone away. They knew that a heavy stone had been rolled in front of that tomb and who would roll it away for them. And I'm sure they were apprehensive because they knew that there were Roman soldiers there guarding the tomb. And when they would harass them, they molest them and not let them go do the things that they wanted to see. And we also know that they probably had some apprehension of their own. Jesus died a brutal death on that cross on Good Friday. He was flogged and he was pierced to a cross and he was spit upon and he had thorns that dug deep into his head. And so I'm sure they were very apprehensive of going to that tomb to see what kind of shape that body of Jesus was in. So there's lots of obstacles that were in their way as they made their way to that tomb on that first Sunday morning. They had a stone, they had soldiers, they had their own fears. But God took care of all of that, did he not? When they got there, there was an angel of the Lord. And he rolled back the stone. And those soldiers were taken care of too. They were so afraid of this angel, they fed fell down like dead men. And the angel said and calmed their fears, do not be afraid, for I bring you good news that Jesus is not here. You see, there was nothing that was going to stop those women on that first Easter to see what God wanted them to see, to witness what God wanted them to see to witness in this world that Jesus was no longer in the tomb. Jesus was not there, but he had risen from the dead. And you see, there is nothing this day that's going to stop God's people from doing the same. We might be scattered throughout this world. We might not be gathered in sanctuaries, but there's nothing in this world. There's no pandemics. There's no quarantines. There's no stay-at-home orders that's going to stop us from saying and speaking these great truths that God desires us and Christians to say. There's nothing that's going to stop us from saying, He is risen. Hallelujah. There's nothing in this world that can stop God's people from proclaiming this great truth that He has risen over everything. We face obstacles, just like those women faced obstacles. Stone, soldiers, fear. They faced many obstacles going to that tomb on that first Easter. And we continue to face obstacles in our day, in our time right now. We haven't seen a pandemic like this for over 100 years. We haven't seen our economy shut down like this ever. And the hardship that it brings upon people in this world. We face many obstacles. But I hope you find comfort this day as we gather collectively as God's people. I hope when you can say in your homes and with your family that He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That you can find perspective at this time. That all is not lost. All is not Hopeless. God is still in charge and he's removing obstacles. Because we know for a fact, we know this as Christians, that even when this pandemic is over, even when the quarantine is lifted and the stay-at-home orders are released, we're still going to face challenges in this world. They don't stop because of the sin in this world. Right now we face the challenges of this pandemic, but there will be challenges in your life ahead. There'll be challenges in your relationships, and you'll still be hurt by your relationships. There'll be challenges at school yet, kids. I know right now this is special challenges, but there'll be continue to be challenges and anxiety in your schooling and uncertainty. There'll be 
continuing to be challenges in our workplaces, in our world, in our communities. Those won't just magically disappear in two weeks or three weeks or a month when this ban is lifted. They're always there for God's people. They're going to be there. We have Easter. We have this message. We have Jesus himself who comes to those women at the tomb. It was not only the angel that calmed their fear. Jesus himself, the resurrected Jesus, comes himself to those women at the tomb who faced all of those obstacles. It was Jesus who was there in his glorious resurrected body who was there from the dead, saying that he had conquered death. He had conquered sin. He had conquered the devil. He was there for them. He says, I go before you, and I want you to follow. I go before you to Galilee, and you tell my brothers, I'll be there waiting for them too. Tell my brothers and sisters, I'll be there. You see, that's how it is in this world. Jesus continues to go before us. He continues to lead us in this world. He continues to know that we will have obstacles in this world. We will have challenges in this world. And sin will mangle up this world and our lives and tangle us up in its webs. But he says, I go before you this day. So have no fear. Do not be afraid. I lead you this day. I had my first funeral this week under quarantine orders and the stay-at-home orders, and we had me plus nine family members gathered together in the funeral home. And as I spoke to those words of hope and comfort of Jesus Christ, the words that came out of my mouth, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And those nine other faithful Christians didn't miss a beat. Did not miss a beat when I said that. As we gathered in that funeral home around the death of their loved one, they did not miss a beat. And I told them, I stopped, I said, you know what? You're going to be the only live people I get to say that to this Christmas, on that Christmas, Easter season. You're the only people that I'll get to say, He is risen. If I was going to say it in front of live people once, what a place to speak it at a funeral as they gathered around a loved one who was called home in death. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? It is not found this day. It is not found any day because Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. And if he has risen over our death and given us new life now and forever, don't you not think he will remove all the obstacles in your life? Don't you think he will be there in all of the challenges to bring you forth? Don't you not believe that he is working all things for the good in your life this day and every day? We might be gathered and scattered this day. But the fact remains, Jesus Christ is risen. He has risen over your sin. He has risen over your death. And you are victorious this day. You are victorious this day. Amen.
rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord and sharing in his peace, let us pray to the Lord on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need this day. O risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross, the hope granted to us of life and death that cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy, O risen Savior, make us burn with fire of your love that we may love you above all things and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts that may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives received in the waters of our baptism. Lord, in your mercy, O risen Savior, anoint the words of those who preach to us your gospel and open our ears to hear with faith that all that he has done to save us. Raise up many who will serve you in various callings of your church, who will serve you in your name, with your word and gifts. Lord, in your mercy. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of Donald, our president, Timothy, our governor, the Congress of the United States, and all the state and local elected officials. Guide them according to your word, that their labors for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain, nor forgetful of the vulnerable aging and unemployed. Lord, in your mercy, our risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer mental illness, and those in their last days on earth. Lord, especially we ask you continue to be with Donna, Shirley, Bill, Tim, being Steve and Dennis. Give them grace according to their need and sustain them in their affliction the day when their sufferings will be exchanged for glory, the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, we place all these things into your precious hands as we come before you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This time we gather our offerings. We have been so blessed here at St. Matthew for all the offerings we received for the support of the gospel. Thank you. Thank you for giving back to the support of the gospel. Thank you for giving your gifts as you've been so freely given to by the death of Christ and by his resurrected power in your life.
Now join in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. We pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace this day and every day. Amen. Before we conclude with our final hymn, I'd just like to say a few thank yous that have made this Holy Week possible and these recordings possible. First of all, I'd like to thank Roxy, my two young ladies there, Jordan and Gracie, for participating in the service. And I'd also like to thank Bob and Jolyn for running tech and Bev and um, putting these services together. Thank you so much. And then also, Andrew Dirks, who's been at home uploading these to YouTube channels, so I'd like to give a special um, thank you to Andrew. And then also to also the rest of my family, my lovely wife, Joy, who's been a blessing to me through my ministry for all these years and continues to be so, and my other children, Ben and Caleb. And also we ask to thank you for Isaac Hedstrom and my Benjamin and Anavea for singing and and my son Isaac yesterday participated in the Good Friday service. And so thank you all. And um, we continue now with our final Christ has tried.